in other universities around the world. When there is a speaker, there usually are students who go to listen. This is the point of having a visitor, you know, a professor from another university speaking, and you are uh, uh, students now, uh, second, third year, or something uh, rather advanced. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, you know, so Sotir is having a, some research meeting with him. Maybe? No, no, we, uh, no, by the way, he had, Zatiris has a research meeting with yes. me and Dima, so not Dima, with Misha. Not, not Misha, not right? Misha. Because he was uh, having that. So, um, okay, I have to leave now. Uh, I will I'll come in the end and uh, take yeah, care of okay, the video. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, well, we'll have a recording at least to, to see this. Now, as I uh, recall from last time, what I did was, remember, we were discussing about the, the so-called tent map, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that seemed to be very, very simple. It's the simplest things you can imagine. Uh, by being as we say, piecewise continuous. In other words, we have a, a new point, x n plus 1, it's defined 0 to 1, as you recall, on this nice little square, and the tent map has this form of being a, a linear function from uh, r to x n, uh, uh, from one half, so for x n uh, below one half and greater than zero, uh, we had this uh, form, and the other one was r times one minus x n for x n greater than one half, less than one. Now, what did we see last time? We, we drew the, remember the diagonal, always to help us with mapping, uh, and we considered a lot of things, like uh, uh, when r was equal to less than, this is what we did for r less than or equal to 2. Because when r is exactly equal to 2, remember, then the map has exactly this form, reaches the top, and that is the case r equal to 2, correct? Now, we said a lot of things about this map, with its fixed point, with its periodic orbits, everything happened in here, we had uh, a lot of instability, and which actually led to chaos, because every periodic orbit uh, is, is unstable. So there is nowhere to go and stop. And usually order means that either you go somewhere and you converge and you stop and you do the same thing at the time, uh, or yes, or that's something where you go, maybe complicated, but there is an attractor. Huh? Something very definite about the subject. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're in, in chaotic maps. There is no attractor, so you are moving around everywhere, just like the smoke in this room. You know, if you blow smoke here, smoke will will just go anywhere around. There's no reason for it to stop somewhere, right? It will move around, and that's what happens with the air particles, with uh, the air. There is constantly uh, this change. And, and all of this was shown by this very simple example. Uh, and now, we stop and ask the question, what happens if, what if R is greater than 2? Could it be that there is something interesting there? So, what did we say we will do? We will take the uh, map and so that I don't draw another figure again. I will come here and uh, choose 
my well, you can you can draw a different uh, square if you like in your notes, but I will take this first idea of increasing the size of the triangle so that it breaks the, the, the ceiling and now it's possible to escape outside so now uh, you, one may say okay what will happen now and this is uh, uh, and please make a note that this is now for r greater than 2 okay now I'm, I'm going to put also some numbers here this uh, point here is 1 over r okay this point here is 1 minus 1 over r okay so we have this uh, region if I bring it down to uh, the basis of the triangle right? uh, we have that um, uh, we, the, the, uh, what if R is greater than 2 there is what we say now there is Escape, huh? you know the meaning of the word escape oh, in Russia, right? You know, mm -hmm. escape of orbits to infinity. Okay, and the question is question, how many will escape? And what will be left uh, bounded, eh? you know the word, bounded in the end? Mm -hmm. You understood? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many will escape? And uh, will everything escape? Uh, and how, how, what will be left? what will be left uh, under uh, boundary and here is I think where you will be surprised eh? as, as Cantor himself was, was surprised uh, you will be surprised because it seems that our understanding of infinity is not very very strong very complete it seems we have to understand what we mean by infinitely many points we think we understand what is a dense set of points, right? Irrational is dense. Mm -hmm. And that uh, rationals are also dense. But the rationals are countable, right? Mm -hmm. and, ration, and irrationals are uncountable. We think we understand. But let's see if we do. Because now I'm going to, and this is the beauty of an example like this. You can ask any question you want. You don't have to use the computer, you use your mind and you try to answer your own questions. Okay, which are, which are the first points that will go? Dennis, what do you think? Uh, between we'll 1 go. over R and 1 minus. Here, right? Yeah. So I can call this interval here delta 1. <laughs> Please remind me your name. You mean Ebi 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 Okay, so this is the first interval delta one from these two, and has a a, a uh, what is it? A magnitude one minus two over r is the sum of this. Mm -hmm. Now these points will go out in the first uh, one one iteration. So with one iteration of the map. Okay, all points in delta one escape. One iteration. What about now after two iterations? 
Uh, this will be the points in what we will call, yes, I will tell you which it was, uh, and which we will be able to draw by proceeding as follows. I will take, you see, uh, so we have to draw certain lines, horizontal lines here, and also here. Because now we want to consider inverse maps, huh? forward they go, but now we have to go back in time. Uh -huh. right? And see which ones started from somewhere, jumped one, two, three, and whoop, went out. Right? So now we see that all of those guys are gone with the first iteration. What about two iterations? Well, you see, in order to get out of here, you must first meet, now I'm going to draw these lines. It's very important to notice these pieces of the map right here. Why? Right? Because in order to... to uh, you, you remember how we go always by the diagonal. Yeah. yeah, let's make, make sure we understand. Yes. Ну, чтобы x2 попало в дельта дельта это регион, в котором после одной итерации ты уже квадрат. Are you talking about the quadrat? That's square. Yeah. What? The quadrat is square. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yeah. So the quadrat is a square. Right. So now you see. The first iteration is one. So suppose. Yes. 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 I claim that the next uh, regions to go away will be, uh, shall I make them red or green? Anyway, these. Let's look at these two regions right here, which I will call delta 2, delta 2, one, one part, delta 2, two, second part. You see also the symmetry, right? Everything is very symmetric. So the slope is 1 over r over here, so the slope is r, and we get look at all these things. Now you see, how do you escape? Remember that we go function diagonal, right? Then function, you remember how we construct the orbits. Mm -hmm. Say we are here. So where do we go first? Find a function, x1. Then find the diagonal, then find the function, find the diagonal, find the function, right? So this is, this is important. You remember that, right? Say I'm here. I go here. Well, then what is the next thing? I go to the diagonal because I have to find x2. So I'm here, x1. Go to the, go to the function. Then where do I go? I need x2. Okay? To find x2, I find it here. But it's the same thing as here on the diagonal. Then I have to find x3. Then I go here. Then I go to the diagonal, find x4, etc. So this is the way we proceed. Now, when do I come to here? When I'm here, I go immediately to these two and I'm out. When do I reach here? Let's go back in time. How do you reach this point? Only if you come from here. Say you're here, you go to the function, then you go to the diagonal, then you go out. Huh? Are you following? You're not tired? Now, uh, okay, so now this part has to go out as, you know, after two times. Mm -hmm. right? 
Now, what about uh, other steps Fur further back in time? Well, for those, we have to see that, in fact, there is a little bit of uh, drawing the picture, that uh, there is, yeah, now you see, all the, these are very important uh, uh, lines. See this point, and this point, just like this point, and this point, and this point. These are very important. So we have to draw these uh, horizontal lines and see what happens if I am uh, now on this on this side. And not only here, but here there is another one of these. So these, these parts are very, very important uh, of the diagonal. I'm talking about here. You see here the diagonal. And the diagonal plays an important role. You have to hit the diagonal, move to the function, go to the diagonal, and then you build an orbit. But now, here, we have to draw also these parts of the diagonal and also the horizontal lines. Okay? So now, you see that we have this part, uh, here we, are, we, are, we have this part, so now, uh, let me see, yes, we have that. Right, so now here, this part here, you see, is another part like that of the function, and it breaks down, and also here, look at this part of the, of the function. Uh, it is important, it has to be projected down to the whole, to this plane, from here to here, and we'll make for another uh, place that has that that is mapped to it. So this part is mapped to the function, goes to the diagonal, goes to the function, and then goes here and out. So these regions will, will uh, go out later, after that. So uh, what uh, is the picture in the end? Uh, let me see if I can yeah, draw this a little bit. A compass set? Yes? Yeah. Uh, the end is a cantor set, correct, and now the regions where uh, you, uh, orbits will remain for a while, yes. now we can, uh, these are the ones that will go out. Mm -hmm. If you add all the deltas, say I, I, I want to stoop to uh, sum all points that go out. Go out means I escape. How do I do that? I take delta 1 plus 2 delta 2 plus there will be uh, 2 delta, uh, I mean 2 del delta 2 yeah, because if this is uh, all right, yeah, no, I think I, I will call this delta 2, okay, and this delta 2 also. So that's why these are the uh, uh, two regions of, of the name delta 2. And then afterwards will be 4 delta 3, etc. And the answer will give us, uh, say up to here for instance, it's 1 minus 4 over r squared. So, yes, 1 minus yeah, 4, 4 over r squared. And if you include this here, the 4 over r squared will go away, and then you will have, uh, uh, with this, 1 minus, uh, I, I don't remember when, over r to the 4th next time. Uh, some number here. And so, as uh, this, is, this is the total uh, uh, amount that will stay. In the limit, as, as these delta n's go to infinity, this is delta 2, delta 3, plus uh, 2, 2n delta n. In the limit, uh, as n goes to infinity, delta is equal to 1. Mm -hmm. And so, you have, you have seen this in a counter, counter set, eh? mm -hmm. you have done that. 
And so, the idea is that, okay, then how do, would you say then that, uh, how would you show what was left behind? If you remember that uh, day. Because indeed, it seems that everything goes out. So if you put on the computer, you will not see anything. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it, you can say that everything is, is already in. If we take uh, the periodic orbits, you know there are periodic orbits, right? Right here, the intersection of the function with the diagonal, here, we have a fixed point. This fixed point is not here, it's here. This will never go away. Mm -hmm. right? This will always be here. Then we saw last time period two. Why did I show you this? Period three, period four, and many of them. But these will not go away. These will stay. And there is an infinite loop, infinity of them. Mm -hmm. right? Which have a big However, since they are all, you remember period two, period two, was uh, given as, if we, I had said last time, left and R, I think, right and left, mm -hmm. something like that, okay? Or I can say, uh, uh, instead of right and left, let's call it here, we can call this region 1, all of this, up to uh, the middle, let's say, yeah, uh, okay? Region, uh, yeah, in, up to the middle, and this one will be uh, region 2. So we had said last time that uh, a period 2 would be the uh, successive uh, uh, jumps between uh, period 1 and 2. From here to here. So that's period, period 2. There's no other period. Then there is period 3. And what did we say was period 3? Well, there was 1, 1, 2, left, left, R, right? 1, 1, 2, left, left, R. Or there is also the possibility of uh, 2, 2, 1, huh? 2, 2, 1, no? One, or 1, 2, 1, you can say, right? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah? No, 1, 2, 1 is, belongs to here. No. 2, 2, 1 never appears here. Right? So there is this. 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, etc., which we, we said with an infinity here gives a combination. Yes, but now this is equivalent to a rational number. Uh, in the binary uh, mm -hmm. representation, uh, if you express a number in terms of de decimal points, uh, it, it, if it's periodic, it will be uh, a rational number. So now we have this rational number, we have this rational number. Uh, if we go to period 4, we will have 1, 1, 1, 2. Uh, example, we also have 1, 2, no, 1, 2, 1, 2 is not good, it's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we also can have two, uh, what it was, 2, 2, 1, 1. Huh? This we didn't have it before. That's for period 4. And in general now, if we go to period 5, 6, all uh, rationals, now there is a one-to-one -one representation between these points and the rationals. Mm -hmm. right? So with symbols, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, I can make any rational number I want. Uh, uh, sometimes in, uh, in your other classes you may say 1 and 0, like the computer uses only 1 and 0, on and off. So then I can have, so indeed all of these rational numbers stay. So you have an infinity of rational numbers that do not run away. Why you say, ah, but they're very unstable, if you move a little bit, they will fly away. Correct. If you move a little bit. But if you are exactly there, mathematics says, this number will be there, mm -hmm. will never go away. So there is already an infinity of points that will stay there. But what about the irrationals? Ah, what about the irrationals? You see? Yes. You see what happens. I will tell you what happens. Uh, 
Maybe I should uh, draw this again. Let's see. We discussed this. Uh, can I do this here? I see that it is a little bit uh, okay. Yeah. Let me let me erase it and do it a little better. Now we are getting into the uh, into the details of the whole thing. But that's the beauty of having an example. It's not just theory, arbitrary theory. It is down to earth on a simple example. That's what. Okay, so now let me draw this again, right here, and here. So I will put again my triangle like this, as you see. I'll put down my, uh, this is uh, like, I call it a channel. Suppose this is a house, huh? and the house, this has a, a chimney, and you cook here, right? The, the, the smoke goes up to the chimney, it goes up. So maybe there's more smoke around here, and finally the smoke wants to escape. But the question is, what will be left behind? So without uh, drawing everything again, I would like to tell you that, yes, here we met the Delta Two guys. This is the Delta One, and this is the Delta Two okay. cases. Now, how would we call, give a name to these regions? Uh, okay. All of this region, I will call it I11. Remember, the Delta II's escape, so I don't want to consider this is like open corridors here. If you remember, Delta II's here will escape. Same thing here. But that brings back what will be what will remain there after the two. At the first step there will be I11 here. I will call this I12 here. I will call this I22, not 21, 22. And as I said, 1 is the left, eh? 2 is the right. And this will be what? I21. Why did I do I give them these names? So let me erase this. You know, we you know what the map is. We are R greater than two. Now notice what happens. Why do I call this one one? Because all the points here will go to region one. Remember, as we said, this is one. This is two. Well, we have divided the square one and two. They will be first at one. And then they will go to the diagonal. Ah, 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 don't forget the diagonal. I told you, without the diagonal, I am nothing. We, we have nothing <laughs> without the simple diagonal because the game is played between the function diagonal, function diagonal. So uh, you can never forget the diagonal. Now what happens? Look at this orbit here. They start from here. Yes. They go to the diagonal, and they go here, and then they will go to the right. So they stay for two times at the region one one. What about one two? Well, you know, it starts at region one, but then as soon as it hits the function, boom, it jumps to to region two. You see? So that gives us now the the points that do this. How about I two two? Well, you see, in I two two, there is also the stupid fixed point. Remember, up here there's a fixed point. That fixed point will never go away, of course. So this is in this region, I to two. So let's see, this, this region goes up to up to the function here. Let's see, huh? If I'm correctly drawing this, let's reach here. Yeah. So then we go up. Yeah, the fixed point is in here. So I to two, you are in the second domain, you go to the diagonal, then to the function you stay in two. Mm -hmm. So that's a very one-to-one mapping between the indices to 2 and what will happen to the orbit. What about I to 1? Uh, see, uh, then it's, you will see, of course, that I am in the in 2, I am in 2, and then I will go, let's go here, I go to 1. Yes, of course I go to 1, I'm looking for the diagonal. Zoop, I go to 1, that and why this is I to 1. Mm -hmm. And now, I these will remain, right? 
So now everything I paint with red are the ones that remain for two iterations. You're with me, right? Uh, in here, delta 2, delta 2, the ones that go away. But these will remain. Now, next step. At the next step, uh, I will draw it below, right here. Uh, I1, 1 will be divided into I1, 1, 1 here. In two pieces. So let's uh, use the markers in a smart way. Like this. This. And of course it reminds you of the counter construction, of course. That's where we're going to. Now, uh, here. What about this part? I2, I12. It will be divided again into two pieces. Right? The same thing here. Two pieces for this, two pieces for this. So now we have eight pieces. What happens to them? They stay for three times. This one stays into I, one, one, one. Stays here. What about this one? This will, will be called I, one, one. They will have to go to two. The first indices are these two. So these are the children, the new generation. I, one, two. But this, I think, I, I don't remember. Can I have to find it now. Uh, maybe it is one, two, one. And this here will be 1, 1, 2. No, sorry. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2. 1, 2, 2. For this one. What about this? Oh, this will be 1, 2, 2, 2. This will be 1, 2, 2, 1. This will be 1, I, 1, 2, uh, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, let's say. 2, 1, 1. And this, this will be I, 2, 1, 2. So this red ones will stay huh, three times for three iterations. Keep going now. I one 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 here. One one two and all the combinations. As we go down the indices that you see, the I indices indices uh, Go through, uh, I would say, uh, assume, in the end, assume all the possible sequences uh, of, uh, of ones and twos. In other words, how can I say that? All possible sequences of one and two. And they start in the limit as uh, they go to us as n goes to infinity, these become points. Mm -hmm. In the end, these intervals will become so small they will become points. And these points can be mapped to all the reals, all the irrationals. Because the rationals are already uh, sorry, let me see. No, okay. That's also well, uh, here, for example, you can have I two 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 all the way infinite many twos and that's this fixed point yeah so here we will have first of all in the combinations of one and two all the all the rationals those periodic combinations of one and two can come up this is where the periodic orbits are the ones that we found and we explained period four period five all these are here because they stay there forever. And now, what else is there? All the, all the irrationals. So nothing else left. So what's happening, Yevgeny? We found that all the, everything left, here is one, is limit of delta equal to one. Everything left. If you sum all the regions that are empty, this region that is empty, this region that is empty, this region, okay. and then in here there are, oh, there they are, regions that are empty, like this. Then all of these regions, if you sum them up, they give you one. So that means that everything left, and the computer is right. And then we realize we don't understand infinity. Because not only everything, everything stayed. Not some things left and some things uh, stayed. Everything 
stay. So then we have not enough, how to say, choices. We say in, in mathematics, we have the rationals and the irrationals. And they constitute from zero to one. Just rationals and irrationals? Maybe there's something we don't know, which is there. And uh, then comes the, 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 uh, the uh, question, how do you measure? You say to me, and I say, oh, everything's state. Wait, Mr. Buntis, what are you talking about? What do you mean state, everything's state? How do you measure? This is a matter of length. You add the lengths of these intervals. And you found that everything went away. Fine. This is a, an easy way of adding those lengths. Now you come to something more difficult. You count the ones that stayed. And you told me that I have found a one-to-one -one correspondence between all the red regions and the rationals. And, the rationals. and that is a very interesting situation. So now, Cantor thought that it would be important to understand uh, how to measure a set. And if we suppose, I recall now that from your yeah, experience, Now here, okay. Если мы сложим все, если мы сложим все отрезки, которые в конечности, у нас получится что-то вообще Okay, so this is how. The first calculation was easy. We can sum up all these intervals. We know what they are from the geometry. We sum them up, we get one. Now the question was, what about the ones that uh, remained? And we divided the wall, we found that in the limit, as these regions, red regions, become very, very small, these numbers here will span the whole infinity of ones and twos, and every combination of one and two, every combination will arise. So naturally, we have both rationals and the irrationals. So here is the problem. How can we describe what is left in a set where we begin to open holes? And the, and the third kind of set. What? Again, we, we, we face the same question. What is left at the end? And at the end means that step number one, I have how many pieces you see here? n equal to n1. I have two pieces. Okay. And uh, how many, uh, what is the... Uh, the length of the piece, this is epsilon 1, let's say, uh, epsilon 1, then epsilon 1 is equal to one third. So we have two pieces of size one third at step number one. What about step number two? I claim we will have four pieces, namely, right, one, two, three, four, and, and the size of each one, call them epsilon 2, will be 1 over 3 
squirt. Okay, fine. <laughs> so now uh, I continue this process and I define what I call, I want to know what is left at the end. Suppose it's measure, measure means the mass. The you know something I can I can count I can weigh it huh? is it sand which has which has a weight so measure is there a measure I don't know suppose its measure is positive suppose it's not zero it's not such a set of points it's a sort of isolated points it's it's not a plane and it's it's really something in between. Okay, but I have to measure it somehow, and I find the weight is m. Let's call it m. Yes. But who gives me this m? This gives it, the m is given by n of n at the end is a step. N step. What will be? We have two to the n. Mm -hmm. There will be right one, two, one, two as we as that we double. And what about epsilon? And here epsilon n. And what is epsilon n? Epsilon n is epsilon is one third, right? One third to the what power? N. Yeah. But now you see this comes the question of the dimension. Because you don't know what the dimension of the object is. Remember, when you have to add one piece, second piece, let's say the dimension is two. Then when you add pieces like that, you have to consider that they are living in two dimensions. If you add pieces like this, the dimension is one, because these are lines, right? So here you will put one. But if they are squares, you're going to make this a two, if it's a, if it's a square, mm -hmm. it has a square. So if it is volume, you have a, a sponge, who lives in the sea, you know, a sponge. Mm -hmm. And you can take it out and has little pieces, and they're in three dimensions. So you have to put here three. Question, what am I going to put here, said Kantra? Well, to find this D, I have to take logarithms of both sides. Logarithm n, one over three, n to the D, equals to log n. Well, let's suppose it must be a positive quantity because we want to know the area, the volume, the measure of this set. So now, whatever it is, we are going to see that the answer, that n of n, log of n of n, what is n of n here? It is 2 to the n, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, n uh, log 2, uh, because n of n, as we said, is equal to 2 to the n. Uh, and what we'll have here plus nd log 1 over 3, correct? And here this is equal to log of the measure. But now, what is the next step? Dennis. What is the next step? Remember that all of this makes sense in the limit. And goes to infinity. That's where we are going here. Ooh, down in the limit when this becomes very small to infinity. So all this process must go to infinity. So I must take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I divide them from here. Mm -hmm. I divide them from here. I divide them from here. This is a finite number. This goes to zero. And the answer is the dimension is log 2 over log 3. Amazing. This is what it says here. We are living, these guys live in a world of dimension 0 0.63209. Now we are beginning to understand a little more about infinities. It's not only numbering and counting numbers, it's also thinking about measure density. That is uh, 
Have you, has you ever heard of these things before? No, huh? you have heard of them. Okay, so it may make some sense. To you. Very good. So now we have a whole field open ahead of us. We have to understand. And the first, now we understand what happens here, right? In fact, the, uh, what is the dimension of this set? At every, at every step, because the, uh, it's, uh, the size is 1 over r. So it's not 1 over 3, but it's 1 over r. If you look at the size of, uh, yes, uh, this, thing, this piece here, yeah, everything, uh, one, all of those pieces are 1 over r uh, pieces. So uh, the, 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 the scale here, epsilon, is 1 over r. In the next scale, these red ones will be 1 over r squared, uh, 1 over r cubed. So the same thing as, as the counter construction, instead of, instead of 1 over r, we now have uh, uh, 1 over, one over yeah, one three. So what is the dimension of, this, uh, of the tent map? The tent map uh, set of escaping orbits, escaping orbits, Walk to half dimension, log right, half r. dimension, log 2 over log r. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, Dennis and Yevgeny, that if r is exactly equal to 2, this dimension is 1. Mm -hmm. But then there is no escape. If r is equal to 2, this is the picture. If I plot the map, this is the map for r equal to 2. And this map never escapes. Everything stays in here, goes around chaotically, in this square, nothing goes away. And that's why this is equal to 1 when r is equal to 2. But it becomes a fraction when r is greater than 2. So for r greater than 2, we have a fractal dimension, what we call the fractal. Um, now, so you see, now we are into another geometry. Now we change geometry. Okay? It's not Euclidean, it's not Riemannian, it is fractal. And because in Riemannian and Lobachevsky and uh, Cartesian geometry, everything is continuous. There are lines, there are surfaces, volumes. Here nothing continues. And yet it's, a, it's something in everyday life. It's, a, it's an example. And now we can see more examples. Look at this, for instance, what happens here. What happens if instead of removing pieces, now I want to put some pieces to this line? I don't want to remove all only, I want to put. So then the dimensions will go high. Now if I put here one third, and one third, you see this is a third, let's say. So then I put one here, then I put more, and I put more, I put more. And then you see, we have a smaller scale, but then every time, it's not. Before, we had only these two. So there was a scale 1, 3 over n, but we had two pieces. Now we have four. So now here, when I come here, I don't have two square. I don't have two to the n. What do I have now? Four to the n. Four to the n. And what is the dimension of this creature? It is log 4 over log 3. Mm -hmm. So it's bigger than 1. So it's not a line. It is something between the line and the plane. Now things start to make some sense. Okay? You can move from dimension to dimension and you start to understand. Because now you have a way of, let's say, uh, understanding the density of a fractal. You say, oh, I see, 1.26, that's very close to 1, 1.26, but it's because this, this looks like a line. Okay? In fact, in Greece, you know, this is the coast line in Greece, very fractal. People swim here, 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 all of Greece, Norway, 
Now we, we have only a coastline on the sea, which is very fractal. A lot of islands and a lot of things. So this is like the coastline of England or whatever. Now this has a dimension of 1.26. And you say, okay, that looks interesting. What if I had started from something which is two-dimensional? I remove the middle one-third. Okay? So if you remove the little uh, one-third, then you have uh, three pieces left. Huh? And what is the size? The size is one-half, because I consider this here having uh, a, a side one. Huh? So this, from here to here, it's one-half. So the scale is one-half. Notice, it doesn't matter if this is a square or a triangle. As you go down, the side of the square or the triangle goes down by one, two to the end. One over two to the end. And look at the dimension. This happens, by the way, three times. Every time this is by three. Three times three is nine. Three times nine, 27. Everything is about to three. So the, the, the ratio of it, 1.56. So this is a denser fractal than the previous one. So now we're beginning to get a feeling of density in this world of fractals. Because we are looking at examples and what happens here. So now you see you are beginning to get, to get a little feeling about this. Uh, when you do it and you look at examples, only then you understand it. Only then you understand it. Uh, you have to really uh, go into uh, examples. So we see this, okay, fine, then one can go on in to look at, yeah, this is called the fractals, fractal geometry, etc., etc. And here, this picture gives you something from experiments from real life. Suppose an experimentalist has this object on his microscope and sees something very small here but has holes in it and doesn't understand how dense is it. So this is a biological substance and you want to know how dense it is. So you say, okay, how do I decide that? Let me divide the square into little squares. And so I count, how do, you, how do I know the measure, this blue? I have to count all the blue squares. Not this one, because it has a piece. Not this, forget this. This I count. This I don't count. This I don't count. This, no, this don't count. Now here, you see, in this region, how many are left? Uh, ah, yes. Yeah. So then uh, I begin to uh, oh, I begin to put more squares into this, and now, and the limit. See, this is lambda. Oops, this goes back, right? Lambda. So lambda is like epsilon. Look, n of n lambda, the limit, the measure. And lambda l is n d. So lambda, okay, between one and zero. So what is the measure of this object? is log n of lambda divided by log 1 over n. Now, n of n is not a simple number, 2 to the n, 3 to the n. n of n is how many you, you count. Ah, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you, uh, yes, yes, okay, sorry, I didn't say. You count all the squares which has one little piece of the substance. Mm -hmm. So if you see blue, you count it. Now, you see this one, you count. This one, you count. This in the middle, you don't count. It has no blue substance. Mm -hmm. This and the middle, you don't count. This and this. So you count. So your first approximation, uh, get out of here. No, forget it. This approximation of the object is, mm, okay, it goes down here, goes around, has a few holes here. Now let's make these smaller squares and continue. And this way you will measure some uh, dimension about this object and you will find what happens in the limit. So, these come to be very, very uh, interesting. Example, in uh, uh, ophthalmology, the eye, uh, there is a problem with some people who cannot see very well, and then when you study the eye, the, the, the blood in the veins is very dense. It has to be fractal and not with low dimension, yeah, because 
if it starts to, if you, if your eye gets sick in this particular disease, then the fractal dimension rises, means the veins are more than they should be. So people study this to see, uh, to be able to see if somebody is healthy or the eye has a problem. With it. By counting this, this very small quantity, you see that. So there's a lot of things we can measure. And here I have shown. Uh, ah, and there is another interesting result, which uh, I don't have time here to prove it and to go through all the theory, which is in the books. But now you see the, the, uh, the formula for finding a dimension, after all, is. Uh, for a fractal of dimension d is uh, r the, the, for for yeah one scale fractal okay now well, how do we call r r we call it well, one over r is called a scale uh, how do we, we say it in, in Russian a scale klimaka um, we say we say a scale of one centimeter, one meter, one kilometer, eh? these are different scales. So, this is the scale. Uh, if r is greater than is two, it's one half, etc. Now, a scale raised to the d distance uh, will give us one, in one scale fractals. A formula we found, we just discovered the formula is this, because if you take the logarithm on both sides, then you have d log r ah, let me see uh, why do I say this? because um, Let me see. Ah, scale is d. Yeah, so we have, uh, in the end, if we have r to the d equal to 1, this means that uh, multiplied by n, we have to take. Hmm. Now. Log hmm. I don't remember that. No. The formula for uh, if we have many dimensions, uh, that is, we have uh, the many, many different um, scales. So you have a tree here, and the tree uh, generates generates a, a branch of uh, scale R1, then generates another branch of scale R2, different branches. This is a smaller, this is a bigger, many different branches. Every branch uh, generates a scale R2 times R1. Oops, sorry. No? R2 times R2, R squared. R2 times R3, okay. so every, every branch branches out in the same kind of scales. Now the equation for the dimension, which I'm trying to remember the proof, <laughs> it doesn't come to me now, uh, the equation for the dimensions are uh, uh, R1 plus D, you have to take every one of the scales, R1, raise it to the power D, add them up, and find this to be equal to 1. So you have a, an unknown in the power. How do you solve this equation for D? Let's see. Now, let's look at the case of the two scale here. Can't it. Two scales. Now I divide this uh, line into two pieces. I alpha, beta. And then it's alpha square, alpha, beta. This alpha divides into scale alpha, alpha square, and this alpha beta. Mm -hmm. 
beta divides into scale alpha and beta. Alpha, beta, beta squared. So the sum of all these is a plus b squared alpha plus beta squared, if you add them up, the total sum. Here, it's like uh, the scales are like this. So every branch goes down to all the possible scales, alpha, beta squared, alpha squared, beta, all of them come up. And the final answer is to find out the dimension, you have to solve this equation for the exponent d. And that is not analytically always possible. Mm -hmm. You have an unknown in the power. And you have to use a computer or something. Uh, yeah, an exercise I, I gave to my students, an exercise is to say that, you know, with, uh, for example, if, uh, if uh, alpha, if beta is, let's say, alpha squared. So say you take alpha to be equal one third, then beta is one ninth. If uh, then you can do this because then you write alpha to the d plus beta, which is alpha squared, uh, to the to the square, so which is alpha to the 2d equal to 1. Then you have an unknown u equals to alpha d, it's just a quadratic, well, and you solve it. Yeah. So this is a very special case in which you can do this. Otherwise, you have to solve it on the computer, use this, and find the power d that gives you the dimension. So we have really begun to understand fractals of many dimensions, and still the, the story is not complete, it's not all well known, because you will see here, for instance, we have something called, have you, have you heard about Newton Raphson iteration, how we find the zero of a function? Have you uh, studied this? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Uh, you remember that, Evgeny? You studied that, right? The, the, how do you call it in Russian? Don't you call it Newton method or something? Suppose you have a, uh, you have a function f of x equal to zero, and you want to find x. Right? Then the Newton scheme, that's why what is called around the world, I don't know, how do you call it here? Newton Raphson, we have a second name, because Newton thought about this, and Raphson made it into an algorithm. Newton Raphson scheme says, you want to find x, then you have to build an iterative process. xn plus 1 is equal to the old xn minus f of xn divided by the derivative of f at xn. Have you ever seen this? Mm -hmm. yes. So you see? I, uh, you've seen this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a very well known. We, we hear it in, in the uh, uh, undergraduate courses of numerical analysis. Now, suppose I ask you to do this in complex uh, variables. Let's suppose I give you I give you this equation: z cubed minus one is equal. What are the roots of this equation? Huh? It's not only one, right? It also has these two roots. So now, okay, use your, uh, the method of Newton. What would the method be? Well, here we have an f of z equal to zero. What is the f of z? Is this? f of z is equal to zero. Right? Okay. Now, let us solve this by the Newton scheme, Newton Raphson scheme. We have z of n plus 1 equal to z of n, the same formula, f of z over f prime. So then now we are in complex numbers, and you have to be careful to do this in writing, for example, xn plus iyn is equal to zn. Huh? So you have a system in two dimensions, and you have to solve this equation. But how does Newton Raphson know if you need, if you are going to go to this root, to this root, or to that root? If they are close to each other, mm -hmm. and here is the amazing picture. Yes. Have you seen this before? You've seen this. Bravo, guys. You know this stuff. So I'm telling you things that you know. I don't know what you know. That's the point. <laughs> anyway, yes. And you know that uh, there is no simple formula for this. For the rest, uh, uh, of course, look at the scales. Uh, there is not only one scale, because you started with this big uh, flower. Let's say it's a flower. So it's a big leaf of a flower. But then the, this leaf has dimension so much. Okay. The small, next smaller one has dimension so much. So much. 
The next one has dimension so and so and so. And the more you go, you find new scales. It's not r to the third to the fourth. It's not a simple scale raised to a power. It's r1, r2, r3, r4, as the previous theory told us. So in order to understand this fractal, one must, first of all, find the scales. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how to do it, but you have to measure it uh, on the computer and find out what it is. The point is that we realize that in, in life there are attractors. If you put the Newton scheme somewhere here, it will all go boom and fall on zeta 1. It will give you zeta 1. This, this formula will lead you to zeta 1. Here, if you put it in the red region, it will go and converge to z3. But it is the boundary between that makes the difference. How do you know when to start? And it turns out that on this boundary, look how red, blue, and yellow are all very close to each other. You make a small mistake here, and you are in the red. You make a small mistake, and you end up in the green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all this shows you that there is a complexity in geometry, a geometrical complexity, which is also connected with dynamics. Because here I'm talking about a dynamical system. It starts from here, it jumps to here, jumps to there, goes to there, here, just like our, our simple tent map. And we want to know, will it go to infinity, will it converge, and what will happen? So we have opened really uh, a, a new subject here with these uh, uh, models, which make us wonder about what do we understand about infinity? How do we understand about dimensions uh, in life? And that is, what is it? Oh, okay. And here, let me try. Yeah, then you go. Yeah. And, and you see that the more. Yeah. Um, ah, you see how it goes? Yes. See, near the origin, what happened? These are the three regions. One, Two, three, <laughs> and uh, and near the origin. This is and by the way, let me write down a very important phrase for you. As you see it, it we, we we found out the important phenomenon called self similarity under scaling. Don't forget that phrase. It's a law of nature, guys. Evgeny, Dennis, this is a law of nature. In nature, there is self-similarity. Look at the flowers. Mm -hmm. right? You see around, look at the leaves on the bushes. Self-similarity. You change the scale and the whole uh, picture looks the same. That is... Uh, uh, so we have discovered a new law of nature called self-similarity under scale. What did you do? <laughs> uh, what? You can go uh, lower like this, huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. And then, and then you will go into other, other topics of uh, uh, the fractals of Mandelbrot and so on. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, another iteration map in the complex plane, ZM uh, in the complex plane, and he wants to, uh, well, maybe you know this already, mm -hmm. you know, you've heard about the and you see. Uh, however, to understand these things, one must go down to simple models. Uh, you can see pictures of your life and say, oh, how oh, nice, Mandelbrot, Newton. Unless you do some exercises to find out what happens, and you will never be able to, to understand the topic. And by the way, we also saw that it has to deal with dynamics. This is not only geometry, it's also motion, movement, mm -hmm. that escapes, that doesn't escape, that stays there, and so on. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, now, what I thought we can do uh, next time, Today we, we covered some of the material. Um, and uh, it will be interesting to go back to uh, 
continuous dynamics, since I'm, I'm living in a short while, I'd like to tell you some important things. And we can analyze here bifurcations in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. You studied the, uh, the simple bifurcations, okay, the uh, pitchfork and the saddle node and all of that, we did it also. But I don't know how well you are aware what happens in two dimensions. This is where, uh, of course, as you go to higher dimensions, the topic becomes quite complicated. What kind of bifurcations will occur in two dimensions? And it is very instructive to take some exercises, to took some problem, and try to understand uh, what will happen. Will you see something that looks like subtle node bifurcation in two dimensions? What would that be? The general theory is not really available. We don't know exactly how to find. We know there are subtle node bifurcations, all these things, but it's it's quite interesting to look at two-dimensional systems. I I don't think you have uh, you have studied. Uh, we have studied some, some, some simple ones, maybe the harmonic oscillator or some linear problems in two dimensions. And uh, let me see. Yeah. I. Was it in a, a, a class in differential equations? You have uh, yes, yes, you had you had done that. And, um, oof, I had some. It's in my office now. And, Try this on you. Let's see how you will react to this one. We have the following problem to solve. Uh, so now we have, let's say, the subject will be bifurcations in two dimensions, and I will come back on it next time. And uh, the example. Example one I can start with is I have dx dt, which I will denote as always x dot equals to y plus 2xy and dy dt, which is our y dot, is equal to minus, and here I will put a parameter. There is a mu x minus y squared minus x squared. So suppose I give you this problem and I ask you to tell me how would you study the dynamics in two dimensions? What is the beginning always? How do we start? Linearize. Linearize about what? Uh, uh, about about zero. About zero? Why about zero? What is what is so interesting about zero? Uh, because zero is a fixed point. Ah, right. Okay. So we need to know what happens about a fixed point. Is zero the only fixed point? I don't think so. Uh, huh? So you see, the one thing that is very important is that all of the systems operate on the plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have x and y. 
nothing else. So maybe if we find the fixed points, analyze locally the dynamics, mm -hmm. then we can glue them together. There will be, suppose there's fixed points, let's find them, okay? So let's start, as you say, fixed points. Uh, this is job number one, and I will also tell you about job number two, which is very important also, is to find the invariant axis. But we will come to that. Let's start with the fixed points. Fixed points are, how many do you see here? Well, I see, for example, first of all, first fixed point, one, is... Uh, zero, zero. Okay? What is the next fixed point? Two. Uh, well, if you see, if x is minus a half, this is zero automatically. Alright? So if I put then one half here, so I begin with, yes, if I put m one half here, what do I have? Then I have zero equals mu over two, Mm -hmm. You agree? Minus y square, I don't know y square, we will find it. Minus, one fourth. minus one fourth. Very good. So now I see here that y square is equal to mu over 2 minus 1 quarter. Excellent. So therefore here I have to say plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is where mu over 2 minus 1 quarter. So immediately you see that some bifurcation will take place if mu is less than a half. Uh -huh. okay. So we must say then that mu is greater than a half, first of all. Otherwise, it will disappear from here. Uh, and we will see how it disappears. So one half is a possible bifurcation value, right? Mm -hmm. Or something will disappear. And the question is, how does it disappear? As a saddle node, as a pitchfork, are there these, these things in two dimensions? We learned them in one dimension. What happened in two dimensions? So, this is a very interesting example to study. So now, indeed, I will make the following uh, remark. Uh, equation one, here, uh, let's call it star. This is the star system. Star. Uh, let's take uh, uh, okay, so we said this is important. In fact, I will take mu equal to 1. Let's suppose I take mu equal to 1. Then I claim the system star is integrable. Which means, i.e., there is a constant of emotion. Nobody knows to tell you how to find integrals. But everyone will tell you, you should try. There are many ways to try, but they may fail. So an integral cannot be found in a systematic way. You have to uh, think a little bit. Okay? So uh, let's see, what happens if mu is equal to 1? Let's take this case. Uh, I have, let's write it again, x dot equals y plus 2xy, y dot equals minus minus x, 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 let's see, minus y square minus x square. See? And now, What do you see I can do here? There is a potential. Let me write if I add these equations, I have x dot plus y dot equal. Uh, y minus x minus x minus y squared. Mm -hmm. right. What about if I subtract them? 
then I have y plus x plus x plus y squared. Huh? You agree? Mm -hmm. So what's the next step now? <coughs> This. You see, this is uh, the kind of manipulations you make to be able to show that something can be solved. Mm -hmm. You see, so now we have uh, uh, two variables. I suppose we can write, you can say x plus y equals to s, huh? and x minus y equals to d. So this is the sum. And this is the difference, right? Mm -hmm. And now, uh, the equations are written S dot equals minus D minus D square. And uh, D dot equals S plus S square. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me recall. Mm -hmm. uh, let me try to remember something else. Here, this is uh, x dot. Okay. There is a quantity. Uh, I, Remember the, the uh, how we find the integral is to show that there is a Hamiltonian. There is a function h, which is the derivative of x dot is dh dy, and y dot minus, minus dh dx. Right? Yes. Remember that. Right. So what is the Hamiltonian? I don't have my notes here with me now. I'll try. We can also do discuss it next time. We can meet again next Friday. Next Wednesday. Uh, and now, what is the Hamiltonian? You see, it is, uh, there is uh, uh, dy is one half minus dx yeah, dx. So h is equal to uh, minus mu, 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 mu is one, mu is one, so it's important. Hamiltonian uh, is one half x squared. So dh dy. Uh, now, if we take dh dx here, we get an x. But there is a minus here. Huh? From mu equal to one, uh, mu equal to one. So there is a minus, minus here. So dy it is a minus. So it's okay. We take the derivative with respect to x of x squared, then we take a minus, and we have a minus x. And the other terms here are uh, plus my, uh, the derivative of y squared with respect to x is x y squared. There's a minus, so it's a plus. And this is uh, minus, uh, well, this is y dot, right? So this is minus x cubed, e plus x cubed, let me see. Okay. If we differentiate this with respect to x, we get minus x. This with respect to uh, uh, x is minus y square. This is ah, a third maybe here. Huh? And now, what about take the derivative with respect to y? What do you get here? You see, okay, so let's take this derivative. With respect to x, it gives us minus x. Respect to this, it gives us minus y squared. It gives us minus x squared. So I get this three. Mm -hmm. okay. And now here, the h dy is what? Is the derivative of this with respect to y. So it's zero here. And minus, uh, sorry, here. So it's plus x. No. This with respect to y is zero. Right? 2 this, x. Yes, 2x1. And 
Who explain? Ah, ah, something is missing. So we're missing. Uh, mm -hmm. See, you see, this is the x x. So we're, we're missing plus y squared. One, one, one. Uh, plus uh, x squared or y squared. Y squared plus y squared over two. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see, in the second equation, this derivative will be zero mm -hmm. with respect to x. So, but in the first equation, the h the y gives us y. Right. So here is the function. And I'm wondering now about this mu that I put here. Maybe that preserves the integral. Uh, is that right? Let me see. Maybe not. Because, no. Because this term here, when differentiated with respect to uh, x, it gives us the minus x. Actually, yeah. we need the minus before one half x squared, maybe. Uh, here, minus one. Oh, here you mean, huh? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Minus, huh? Minus. Because in this case, minus the x. This is a plus x. Here, if I do it this way, here we were. Here, yeah. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have to have minus the x. Minus the x. Why? Because this is it. So if I take, you say, uh, plus here, huh? this is what you said. If I take plus, then dh dx, uh -huh. you see? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. right. Then it's correct. This is correct. Mm -hmm. This is correct. So you see? So we have quadratic, this plus this, x squared plus y squared is like a bowl. A uh, surface goes up like this, plus cubic terms. So it's interesting to see what this function looks like in three dimensions. And, uh, by the way, this is an integral of the motion. Uh, why is that? Because if I differentiate the h, dt, now we learn this is called a Hamiltonian, and maybe you have heard this in your other lectures, mm -hmm. the h dt is of course equal to partial of h with respect to x. Partial of x dx dt. Partial of x dx dt. Plus dh dy times dy dt. So now, if we use this Hamiltonian to substitute in here, you see that, well, that's just what we did here, right? Minus, minus dhx. If you multiply dhx, multiply dhx by x dot. Multiply this by x dot. <laughs> you have this. Uh, give a minus, okay, make it a plus, this is a minus. Let's go to this one now. dh dy uh, multiplied by y dot, multiplied by y dot. Add them up, zero. Mm -hmm. right. So this is indeed a constant of the motion. And we have now uh, points in the, in the plane, and that's the question is how to study now the dynamics uh, in the plane. For this case. So, uh, you never know when you're given a system whether it will be uh, a constant of the motion. Usually it's not. But sometimes, very special cases, we have to, uh, we have this. This is a lot of important information. But I want to finish for today by one example. We'll come back to this. Next time we will go through some bifurcation. Put a mu here and see how important the mu is to put here. Because I think it will be important to keep the new uh, equal to one. Uh, and the thing is that, uh, besides fixed points, fixed points, look for invariant axes. Of the problem. What does it mean to an invariant axis? It means that there may be a value of y or x for which an equation gives you zero here. For example, what will be uh, a, a value of x that will give you give zero in this equation? You see, in, uh, let's take the yeah, equation how to call it, equation 
one. Let's say equation two. Look at equation one. When x is equal to minus a half, mm -hmm. the right hand side is zero for all y. But x dot is also zero because x is a constant. So x dot is zero. So nothing is moving on this axis. But where is this axis? It's here. So once why is this an invariant axis? Because if you are on it, you never leave it. Mm -hmm. Once you are on this axis, why you never leave it? Because x dot is zero. So this means that it does. And what is this point right here? X is minus a half. This is zero, and this is the y-axis. So now we start to understand there's a wall here. How are you going to plot curves if you don't know where the wall is? And as you see, now the question is, are you on this wall? Is the orbit going down or up? What is dy dt? on this wall. Let's put here x equal to minus a half. What is the y dt? y dot equals. What is minus x? Work out. Is, is one half. What is this? Minus y squared. Ah, minus y squared. Yeah, minus y squared. And this is minus one fourth. Huh? Minus one fourth. One fourth, right. So the answer is, yeah. One fourth minus one fourth y squared. Minus y squared. So if y is greater than half, so there's a point here, mm -hmm. uh, y equals a half, let's say. So uh, above it, the derivatives are negative. Yes. So right above that point, which is here, one half, uh, but it's the point one half, uh, uh, minus one half, comma one half, minus one half here. So above it, you have the orbit going down, 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 and below it, going up, because mm -hmm. y is more. So here we have like a fixed point, we observe, and everything stays on the axis. See? So that is a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of things you can learn by looking at uh, uh, if there are invariant axes, is there any other axis in the problem that's invariant? Well, you have to uh, Anyway, okay, we, we, we covered a lot of ground today and we can finish everything next time. It's an interesting example to, to play with and to study. Okay, guys, what is this? The Lawrence attack, huh? It is. It's not mine. It's not mine. Okay, I didn't know. Of course, we should erase. Huh? Thank you very much. I can erase in the bottom. Can you help me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can. Okay, sure, can you do it? And then, yeah, can you erase a little too?